Very good. All right. Well, we are, um, I guess, good to go then. Do we have any public that you know of, Eric, this evening? Uh, none that I see, Madam Chair. Okay. No. All right. Well, we are, um, as usual, being recorded. Um, thank you guys for showing up tonight and committing to another year on the Green Space Commission. Should be an exciting spring and summer. Um, so I'm glad to be back with you guys. Um, and I just, well, Eric just informed us that all meetings are going online um, from today forward. And I guess you guys will announce when we're when things would be back in person. That is correct. And just by way of brief update for everyone, I think for members, you'll still have the avail availability to come to a room if you prefer, but it's really the public. So any of your guests and such oh, like that okay. is gonna to need to be on Zoom. Um, so uh, we may, uh, simply because to give enough space, we may move all meetings out of this room. You know, we're pretty small tonight and safe, but into the larger, con the actual chambers if, if it's open so that people have a chance to spread away because with the new cameras, we can move all around that room and such. So. Okay, very good. So we'll uh, keep up to date from the city, I'm sure. Yep. All right. Um, so I guess we'll do, if Ginger, would you mind doing the call? Oh, not at all. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, Annie? She there? Oh yeah, she's there. Um, Bill, is Bill Haas? No. Oh, you said no, Bill. No, no Bill. Restart. Okay. Uh, Pam, no. Ginger, I am here. No problem. Laura? Here. Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, Linda, I see Linda. Here. Jerry. Here. I see Jerry. Okay. And then Carrie. Yeah. Uh, Corin. Here. Hey. Um, Joe. Here. All right. And Yvonne, no. Did I? Oh, and then Eric is standing in for. Hello, Eric. Hi. Hi. Is that, is that everybody, I think? Yep. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay. Jerry, uh, Jerry, just briefly, um, we had a note pop up here. I don't think it should shut down, but our my our computer in this room may restart automatically because it's been off over the holiday when no one was here. So uh, if it does, we'll come right back on. The meeting will stay on. So you guys will be able to continue. You should be able to continue on. Okay. All right. We'll stop with the meeting and just have fun while you're gone. If, if it does happen, if anyone gets kicked <laughs> off, just give it a minute, come back, we'll be here. Okay, so. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Yeah. All right, um, then the next item is uh, approval of uh, November minutes. I think I'd like to amend the minutes to say, um, There on that first uh, meeting minutes, um, the next meeting date is January 3rd, 2020. Oops. And I saw one other thing, Ginger, I was thinking about um, item D in old business. Could you just, I think for, I'm starting to get a little confused when I'm reading the minutes. Can we call the uh, the tree renewal program, the future trees of distinction, just for future reference. Yes. Versus Linda. trees of distinction. I think that'll keep it straight in my mind. Future, yes. Okay. Anybody else notice anything else? With hey, Linda, I actually just found my notes from the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you about that later, but. Uh, okay, well, I think we'll, um, you wanna somebody make a motion to approve as noted? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve as noted. I, I approve. Okay, um, then uh, on to the new agenda. Um, so I think this is when we would have guests speak, but we don't have any guests present. Um, so we will um, jump to old business. Um, and the 
first um, item on old business is the Douglas Hill development. Um, so I, I think probably everybody knows the outcome of, of that. Um, so there's really not much to, to go on there. Did anybody have any questions about outcome or anything like that? Anybody want to cheer for the yeah. wildlife? <laughs> I think everyone was right. surprised that it was all unanimous. That was really a surprise. It was a little surprising. Was there any response or feedback to the letter that our committee sent or commission? Oh, no. I did not receive any. Okay. Um, we did go on that um, walk, um, which was pretty interesting. I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity to walk the creek in that section. Um, and it's it's all private property. So um, I don't know when you might have that opportunity here again, but it, um, I think there's a lot of potential there for a, a project in the in the future and certainly for conservation. So, you know, we might want to keep that on our radar, um, potentially working with the Deer Creek Watershed Alliance, who was out at the walkthrough and who hosted our sort of meeting with the design team. Um, I have a feeling that uh, Stacy Arnold said they were going to do, if the construction would have gone ahead, they were going to do some water quality testing there um, in advance of construction. She was trying to get a grant for that, but since the construction is not going ahead, she's setting that aside. And I told her, I thought um, that my guess was that not a lot was going to happen in a in the short term, so that 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 would be um, fine. And um, you know, we would just keep her in mind if we're going to be thinking about trying to partner on any projects there in the future. Um, Perry, did the task force Deer Creek Alliance task force have come to any conclusions about what? As he was proposing to do, like is that mm. terrible or not terrible? No, I did not see any um, any feedback from them. Wow, that's disappointing. Well, I don't know that Stacy necessarily asked them for feedback. I think she was just trying to bring the issues up to them and share uh, what was going on, and I think have that as a resource should the project advance. So, um, but she's very interested, you know, in anything that's happening in the watershed. So I think she's a good um, advocate for the watershed and a good ally for the Green Space Commission. I kind of thought once we got down in the creek, it looked better than Chapman kept telling us it was. There were definitely some really yeah. interesting parts of the creek. Yeah. That's a neat trees in there too. Yeah. Okay, well, if there's nothing else to um, go there, the next uh, item on the old business is the Trees of Distinction program. And I'm gonna assume that's the future Trees of Distinction program. Is that right? Okay. So nice. uh, okay. <laughs> So um, the Future Trees of Distinction program, actually, um, Laura and I um, met mm, a couple of weeks ago, well, before the holidays, I should say, um, just to sort of brainstorm together. And um, we had invited um, Andre Bueller from the city to meet with us just to sort of start getting a framework for what this program looks like. Unfortunately, Andre, um, I forgot about the meeting. Laura, I talked to him later. He said he actually forgot he was disappointed because he really wants to, to be involved. So um, I've been working to um, meet with them um, separately and just we haven't been able to find a time. So my goal is to meet with them this week um, because we identified really um, the first step for that um, initiative is to identify the um, locations for the future trees or potential locations for the future trees. Um, so that's really gotta be done in partnership with the city and the arborist because 
we want to make sure they're really um, happy with where these trees are going to go and um, that we are finding the best locations for for the trees. So I'll, I will give you guys another update after uh, I meet with him. But uh, the other thing we um, talked about was that we really need to find those locations by mid to late January at the latest because of all the sort of pieces, dominoes really that need to fall into place after that. Um, you know, sourcing the material, starting that outreach and um, that's really the, the first fundamental piece. So our goal is to have those identified by the end of the month for sure. So I will keep you updated on that. Any questions about that? <clears throat> Okay, um, item C, nomination for um, the Trees of Distinction Award uh, and planning for Arbor Day 2022 event. Um, after our meeting in November, I think, um, Joe um, stepped up and volunteered to sort of lead the um, initiative for the Trees of Distinction Awards and Arbor Day celebration. So um, Joe and I met, I think it was before Thanksgiving or around Thanksgiving to, to kind of hand over some of the information and data on that. So um, I don't is there anything you want to mention, Joe? I know we all need to start coming together to, to um, get some trees uh, for nomination and be thinking about uh, those awards. The biggest thing is, is <clears throat> trying to get to engage with the public to start getting, you know, trees submitted. I mean, I can go around Webster and find giant trees hand over yeah. fist, but I mean, that's no, that's no fun for the city. We need to figure out a way to engage the public for the future of this program. I mean, if not, it'd be everybody in this room and online looking for trees and then it kind of, you know, we need to figure out a way. So Since yeah, and I'm gonna have Colleen Draggy speak. We could do a lot of you know display at the library and you know, where everybody goes to invite public to so on. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Linda. And I know Joe, we talked about maybe you putting a slide together or something mm -hmm. just to present to the audience that we have there. Um mm -hmm you know, take five minutes to talk to them. So I think that's a really good idea. But um, Linda, if if you wouldn't mind talking to the library, I mean, maybe we could- Right, tomorrow I will see them. Put a, some kind of poster together or something. Because they want to have a display of tree books, you know, and tie it into the talk. I'm assuming that we're still going to be able to have in-person talks. Yes, that's my assumption at this point. I guess, do we know if we've gotten much uh, response from the, I posted all over Facebook and it looked like it was gonna be a good response, but do we do we know if anything has been submitted anywhere? I don't well, know. I, I haven't submitted this to the city's website and the newspaper's calendar website because we're just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. So kind of, yeah. Um, drop it. I have some drafts of posters made up. Awesome. Coffee shops and stuff around well, town. What do you think about a timeline for that, Linda? Do you think we could, because it's the 26th, right. is that yeah. right? Yeah, it's the last Thursday of the month. Should we maybe wait till the end of this week? Well, I'm going to get the flyers made up tomorrow. Oh, okay start taking them around but that's um it's too bad the paper doesn't have the calendar in the print version because that's yeah that's so much response but okay the library will do, i mean you know we'll post publicize it there otherwise it's just our little flyers and what we've done in the past. and and um social media but the um the city put something on their announcements, right? Linda, has, are you coordinating yes. that? 
Well, I haven't. Yvonne normally. Yvonne normally does. Okay. That's kind of her. So, okay. so the city, just to hop in, the city will happily post anything on our social media and such. So Yvonne will get it to Jenny Starkey, our director of public affairs, and can put it put it okay. together. If the Trees of Distinction has a form or submission, you know, and that uh, yeah. needs a web page and that, we can have that easily constructed. So, yeah. And I, okay. You know, I think a, one thing to add if you're going to do just a short little slide, one slide or two slide presentation at a library plan to come to one of the council meetings and do the same in yeah. remarks of visitors. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and we can easily put the slide up and it, it, I mean, just adds a little bit in and we can clip that audio and video out and use it for other things as we're looking at our, our mix. So. There might be a way to get it into the papers somewhere like think about that. That would be good. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how we could do that. We have a little budget money. <laughs> not a lot, but we have a little. I don't know what what they give us a discount rate, I mean, Linda. For a fee, they'll happily make up a thing for us, you know, for several hundred dollars. Um, right, but if um, if we have something, you know, already, maybe it's just a modification of Joe's slide or something. Yeah. Is can can they put that in the paper for a smaller fee? We're talking about trees of distinction, the future trees of distinction. Denominations. We're talking about the and Trees Award. of Distinction Award for we our have, We have several months for that. Yeah, that. But I mean, That's we want to be we want to be collecting candidates. Right. As, so we should start can. promoting it. If we promote our first talk when the tree lady comes to talk. Mm -hmm. I think we can put it in our community connection part of the Webster Kirkwood Times, right? I think Yvonne usually takes care of that, but. I can follow up with her. Oh, that would be great, Ginger. Yeah. Oh, they must have just gone down because oh, it's party. just us four now. <laughs> time to party. Um, that would be great. Actually, did you see in the, I don't remember if it was this last um, issue or the one before that, but the community connection that um, she had a whole little blurb about sustainability and trees planted and I did see that. That was fun to read. So yeah, that'd be great if she could put that in there. Yeah, I'll follow up with her. And then of course I'll keep blasting, you know, the, the community social media pages. Yeah, someday I want to talk to you about those, Ginger. Um, just to know like where, I mean, I don't I know nothing about the Facebook. I'm not on Facebook that much. And I really, I should be more aware of the things that you're doing out yes. there. Yes. I spread stuff to the students at school, but that's through a whole nother network. So I don't know if maybe we could set up a separate little chat sometime oh, to talk yeah. about that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, really? At least we, sure. and they have strangers who are not paid. You're back. No. Did, did you guys continue on while we were gone? We did. We had a party while you were at the party. <laughs> that the meeting is adjourned. We're done. Right. <laughs> okay. So, Linda, I think we were talking about the potential of um, ads in the newspaper for the yes. Trees of Distinction program, which we need to award in right. you know, April. That's in April. So we can start. And I'm trying to recall. Webster has a page, and Kirkwood has a page of city yeah. stuff. And whenever our turn is to do that, because we just had it, I think. Before I think we did too. Yeah, and I remember. It'll be that. a couple of months that we could put it in there too. So we do that every month as a community every connection. Month. So so we can, again, if okay. Yvonne gets us to Jenny Starkey, we can put that in the space okay. and the community connections. That's not a problem. If you have a little bit of budget and need a little more in a budget to do an ad, you know, just have Yvonne reach out to us with what your. Your hopes are. I mean, it's all within reason, right? We try not to have, you know, one one board get ten thousand dollars and one board get none, but but we can <laughs> we can do that, right? I mean, we can move some money around here and there to support the program. So that would be great. Yeah. Well, Linda, would you would you maybe talk with the folks at the newspaper yes. again about just putting a small ad in there? Well, I can. What I will get these. What costs? Okay. Right, right. I mean, we need to know. Start with money first. <laughs> what we can afford and then talk to them about doing an ad. But I think a mention in, in the yeah. Webster page would be enough. And okay. Then, um Horn was mentioning it would be nice if they could do a story. 
So if probably Joanne Fogarty has been on the board for so long, it'd be nice to do a feature about this program, which goes back how many years? This a lot. Day celebration. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's part of. They would do that. They would send that. So do you want to sort of? I'll talk to them. Awesome. Thank you, Linda. All right. About and, a press release. How are press releases handled? Is it so again, the city, we have all that capability. We can do that. It's a matter of just working with Jenny Starkey. And you know, so much like Sustainability Commission did their survey and there was a press release and such. Yeah. We can do all that. So um, well, Linda, we were, why don't yeah. you um email Yvonne and I and we can sort of coordinate? It's just yeah. Because people will do it if we come to them organized. <laughs> right, right. So we have to do a little bit of like Sure. And Joe, were you going to be able to put a slide together for the right. meeting? I, I make something happen. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Anything else about the Trees of Distinction Awards? Okay. Um, Next item of old business is the Mayor's for Monarchs Pledge. Um, and we're in January, Jerry. I've been waiting for December. It's open. It is open. And Eric, Eric, Eric said I can share. Yep. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, yeah, he said I can share, but he didn't. He didn't promise. There we go. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is the National Wildlife Mayor's uh, Monarch Pledge page, and if you go to the second tab, is the signatory. So these are the the uh, ones that have already done it, and the so for 2022 which is our new year, the pledge is in progress. We are down here, Mayor Welsh, Webster Grove, Missouri, with four actions in progress. And when you click on it, um, so I wrote this um, over the holidays and um, it, any of this can be edited. Um, but uh, this is for our pledge summary. Webster Groves is a beautiful community located in southeastern St. Louis County with population of roughly 23,000. Is that accurate or is it 22 or? 24 now. 24, 24 okay. I'll change that. I won't do it live. Uh, the city is home to 20, few, 20 beautiful parks comprising more than 120 acres, many green spaces, native prairies, and community gardens. Mayor Welch is committed to saving the monarch butterfly and other pollinators with the signing of the mayor's Monarch Pledge. The mayor in partnership with the Webster Groves City Parks Department, the Green Space Advisory Commission, Master Gardeners and Concerned Residents looks forward to engaging the community in increasing awareness of the need for and building more pollinator hot habitat. Um, and then when you look at the action items, these are the, the three that we um, have done. We first uh, issued the proclamation to raise awareness about the decline of the monarch butterfly and the species need for habitat. Um, second was engaged with the city parks, public works, sustainability, and other relevant staff to revise and maintain mowing programs and milkweed native nectar planting programs. And then uh, engage with gardening leaders and partners uh, to support the monarch butterfly conservation, which we're also doing. And uh, program... Uh, demonstration gardens, a holster support, a native seed or plant sale, which we've already done. Now there's many um, action items to can, that we're very close on or kind of have done or partially done. And we talked about um, forming kind of a, a cutout committee um, of which Linda has uh, volunteered to be part of with me and anyone else who wants to. And I'd emailed uh, the mayor to uh, with this information and gave her the, the website link. And uh, here I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second. And um, 
haven't heard back from her. I told her, you know, after the new year when she settled down, to, we can either uh, talk or, or pl- you know, meet or pl- plan a time to meet. So um, if anybody else would like to be involved, um, that would be great. I have a press release. Let's see if I can share that. Sorry. That, um, which is why I asked about the press release. <laughs> if we can, um, you can see this? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, and, you know, we, the, the group can, uh, you know, refine this, but uh, we can come out with a press release. I actually thought it's cleanest to make the uh, January, uh, you know, the beginning, because that's really what it is. We're part of the 2022 cohort. So um, the, the mayor, you know, signed it in, in January to begin this year. Um, so we have a, a press release for that. And um, I'm not sure. Oh, well, it's related, but you're going to talk about it later about the uh, February talk. So um, yeah. well, we'll let say that to your new new item. Okay. But that is uh, uh, re- related to this, and possibly depending, you know, with conversation with Mayor Welsh, she might want to use that. Um, you know, if we're all in person at the library on February 24th. Um, to be in attendance and kind of announce it then um, more so, but we can all talk about that. And there, there's a lot, there's a lot we can continue to do with this. Um, yeah. There's, there's 30 action items and, and uh, yeah, so go ahead, Carrie. Oh, thanks, Jerry. That looks, that's so exciting to finally see it there online. And um, we appreciate the work you you've been doing on that and everybody has been so and thanks for coordinating with the mayor. Um, so are you gonna send that press release around for everyone to peek at or were you just gonna get a draft and just go kind of to the mayor with it? No, I, I thought Linda and whoever else is in the group should go over it and kind of refine it. And we agree and- Okay, great. And let, you know, pass it back to the the commission and, and let, um, you know, Vaughn and, you and everyone approve it. Okay. As well, sounds... as well as the mayor. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. Jerry, just real quick, I threw it in chat, Jenny Starkey's email, Jerry, so you have it as well. Um, so she'll do the official sending once it's all ready to go. So I'm just including you. And then like I noticed on the website, it, it looks like a picture bubble, you know, there wasn't a picture. So if you need a city logo or anything yeah. like that for the website, email Jenny, she'll know about this and you can get whatever you need from her. So. Yeah, I, I copped this off the website and the background wasn't very good. So uh, not a problem. Yep. We've got official letterhead for the news releases and everything like that. So. Right. Um, and just right now, I'm, I'm just putting into the chat just so you have it, the, uh, the link for the website. So. Well, well thank you very much, Jerry. Okay. Uh, any anybody have any questions for Jerry or, or thoughts or comments? I do. Uh, you said there were thirty action items. Uh, yes. So that that are going to be done or that are being considered or to to qualify, you have to do three of the thirty yeah. to qualify and be on the website. Um, there are some communities that are up to eight. You know, there's a, there's a lot of other things we can do, education programs and. A lot of things overlap and check off those boxes, but we targeted uh, three, well, four action items to, to start to get us going. But that's on the website. And um, in the next email that goes around to everyone, you can include the, the website link and, and the documentation to go with it. Okay, I'll find those on the website. Thank you. All right. Um, on to new business then. Uh, the educational or um, lecture series discussion. We've um, done some good planning for uh, a January and February. Is that is that the um, pollinators talk? Yeah, yeah. Uh, February twenty February twenty fourth. 
February 20th. I, I assume it's at 7 p.m., Linda. We never set a time at the library. Is that when it normally it starts? It, I'm just, it's going to be 7. 7. Period. Because For both of them. there by 9. And something that concerns me is their sound system. Yeah, they're set up to do slides and so forth. I don't know what Fapel and Colleen have, but I thought I would talk with the library and make sure that I know what they have available and then make sure that those, you know, they'll each bring their laptops, I'm assuming, with their presentation. And they have to be able to communicate so we're not wasting 40 minutes trying to get the equipment. That's my nightmare is getting the equipment to work. So is anyone here good at this stuff? I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm fair at it, um, um, Linda. So I can be sure to be there. Um, well, and I wanna be there both, both evenings. So I can be there a little early for sure. But I know in the past, um, Yvonne has been able to um, acquire a, a laptop, I think through the city for a couple of other presentations that we've had. So I think if the library doesn't have something, I'm guessing the city could help us. So I would I would check with the library. If they have a laptop, then it's a matter of just getting the presentation on that laptop. If we need a laptop from the city, okay. or we can work with Tom and the library staff and make sure just hey, to get the technology. Exactly, yep. And I think for um, Jerry and I um, to coordinate with James and, um, Colleen and just make sure that, you know, what the format of their presentation is and if it's a PDF, what it's compatible with, uh, you know, and can they put it on a thumb drive so that we can be I sure to, that is yeah. So uh, I think um, Jerry, you know, if you can coordinate with James uh, ahead of time, maybe a couple weeks out, send him an email and I'll, I will make a note um, to check in with Colleen and do the same with her. And that way we'll answer some of those questions before the night of Linda. It'll take some of the stress out of it. <laughs> well, it's your worst nightmare is that everybody's prepared, but something doesn't work. It's right, fun. right, you yeah. You mean like a computer restarting through the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Always something. So, so Jerry, do you think you could coordinate that sort of logistical piece with uh, James? Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm I'm having connection problems. We can hear you now. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a PowerPoint. Okay. And if he's going to bring his own laptop or how he normally, you know, how he normally. Well, Linda, would you ask if the library has one so um, that and we, if, you know they should have a laptop that connects. Mm, I mean, Jerry, you're kind of, kind of, you're kind of breaking up, that. Jerry. To make sure that it works. Yeah, so you were going to see them tomorrow? Is that yeah, what you said, Linda? I'll talk to somebody here. Okay, well, if you can ask them that. He knows about that stuff in the back room. Right? Okay, and then just email Jerry and I and let us yeah. know whether they have a computer or not. And, um, you know, I'm sure James has one and Colleen, so we should be good. I think the um, the February meeting, Jerry, we were just talking about the mayor coming to that talk on February 24th in coordination with Paul Pell, who's going to be talking about pollinators, especially the Lepidoptera, which plants to buy, trees to buy that would support them. Um, we should have maybe make sure that she's going to have a place, you know, she knows that she'll be able to to talk about launching the program. I think and we by might. By the way, we don't have any, anyone lined up for March yet. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about that. So I think Jerry's having some connection issues, yeah. but um, maybe Ginger in the in the minutes, can you make a note that Jerry will reach out and coordinate mayor's attendance or participation in the February event, if, if possible? Yes. Yeah. And I, we'll have our meeting long before then, so okay. she'll know about it, and we'll know if she's coming or not. Great. And I miss I missed the part about James, but um, somebody let me know if the library has a computer, and 
he can just bring a PowerPoint on his uh, USB thumb drive. Okay, Linda will let us know. Um, okay. I was going to ask too, when we write up our, make the little flyers, I usually try to put a little bit of something about the speaker. So do we have, I don't have anything for Colleen in terms of her. Okay, I can get some bio for her. Just a little bit. And James, I think his is online. Some of those wild ones. Yeah, I, I cut and paste into an email um, quite a bit. So you might want to narrow it down a little bit. So you want to have it done. And then we'll get the library to select a lot of books and do their own promotion. I was just going to say, too, this is just my collection of stuff about pollinators. And so we should try and come up with a lot of these brochures if we can get them from Hello Native and the Department of Conservation. I think Department of Conservation and Audubon would be good too, yes. I bet. Audubon, State of Missouri is just in the county parks. They have theirs here. Oh yeah. And I think the uh, I think Rolling Ridge has a lot of the stuff too. So did you you I collected a, a yeah. lot from the oh, last um, from think, the seed yeah. this year. And I think that, and the library at two Debbie. Is that Debbie Land has yeah. access to so we'll just make sure there's a bunch of those. She probably had I mean, yeah, but she probably put them out already. Yeah. So well, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll, I can I can get you what I have. So I don't know if I can attend that night, but I can drop it off at the library if not over the weekend. So are we agreeing to have uh, one handout? Or, or Linda, can you pick one and that we can have available one only one <laughs> well no well i meant what one, one that there's a number of copies that every or you know as many as you can get but yes. uh, uh i mean i have a bunch you have Multiple a bunch copies. and all, i mean wild ones i mean I, they'll just give it to us i'm almost certain that they okay it's just a matter of making the connection and um, yeah do you want do you need help with that linda do you want um Anybody else? <laughs> I can reach out to the county because I work for the oh, county great. parks. Oh, great. So this is, there should be no problem. And, and this is there. Yeah. And that's just one of many. So. And then I'm going to see, as of now, see Mark Gerber from the Conservation Department this Friday. I can ask him about anything that right. they have. He's the Webster Groves representative for the oh, Conservation okay. Department. So I can make a note to try to talk to him on Friday. So. That would be great, Joe. Yeah, they have some native plant garden kind of yeah. brochures I know I've seen and that would be great. All right, so then the final, I guess, point of that um, new business item is a March right. discussion. And I guess we don't have to do a March if we're doing January, February, but um, I think it would be, it would be nice. Does anybody have any ideas or thoughts or? Did we have any subjects we've already talked about that I'm missing? You mentioned some other names, I just cannot remember. Is the plan to have one every month or what, what is the well, schedule? We were gonna try and do three before the season takes off and we move to our outdoor things. Like we talked about doing more tree walks, which seem to be catching on. Um, I know that somebody at Forest Wheatley, they do a talk about what they're doing. In fact, and, to, to the Garden Club next, next week. And Yvonne, I remember, mentioned somebody from the, it was like a river outfitter. They're starting in, I don't know if you guys remember this, it was like big, big money, money event, outfitters. Big money adventures. Yeah. She said that that person was very knowledgeable about um, greenways or blueways, excuse me, um, and would be a really interesting speaker. And that yeah. sounded kind of cool to me. Big muddy adventures. They take folks on the river. Yeah. But I mean, that's like good timing if they would come and talk about that and talk about the, the value of, of the importance really of our of our watersheds and creeks and rivers. And I think that's, you know, where they 
start from. So um, I can reach out to Yvonne and see if she'd be interested in, in asking that her contact. That would be. So I think one thing I've picked up in this whole Douglas Hill thing in the Shady Creek is that a lot of people don't understand how they function. Mm -hmm. I talk to so many people who would, you look at Shady Creek in the summer and it's just this tangled mess of, and they just think it's horrible, but they, mm -hmm. they don't understand. But now that the leaves are gone and you can see down in there, you can see it better. So maybe that would be a good topic. Yeah, and maybe I can even talk to Stacy Arnold, who's the Deer Creek Watershed yeah. coordinator, and maybe she would come and talk for just a couple of minutes about the Deer Creek watershed. So kind of the, you know, the regional thing from this guy from Big Muddy, but then specifically about the creek in our own backyard. Because I've heard that Missouri is particularly blessed in lots of riverways mm. and streamways that we're mm -hmm. kind of not gonna be less affected by droughts because we have so much. Of them. Okay. Does that sound good to you guys? I was going to yeah. suggest, you know, Daniel Hake, Danielle Hake. Mm -mm. She's a Webster resident and she's very knowledgeable on like Deer Creek Watershed River Repair Watershed, which is all, they all tie in. And she was doing her thesis on, oh, like how road salts affect our waterways okay. that go in river repair that dump into uh, the Mississippi. And Yvonne knows her really well as okay. well. So just. Okay. Just What's her name? Danielle Hake. It's Hake with two A's and then K E, H A A K E. Well, uh, when I reach, there, so. okay. When I reach out to Yvonne, I'll ask her about yeah. that. That's a great idea. Have somebody local. Yeah. Local. So we'll maybe think the end of March again, the end of the month. Yes. And I looked just before I left, and the last two weeks of March are open in the evening. Okay. So, any preferences? Um, and I did ask them if we have to cancel, there's no penalty. Okay, good. Just give them enough advance warning. So, so. You want um, if we do it at the end of the month, the last fourth week. Oh, we have, to, we have to figure out when school spring break is. Right. Spring break is the 21st to the 25th. I'm going to be gone okay. with my so kids. That's week one of the yeah, so, so I think probably the week after that would be good. The last week. So what are the dates of the spring break? 21st through the 25th for Webster. For Monday through Friday. So maybe so, the 29th, 30th, or 31st. Okay. Okay. It's just that we need to make sure that our speakers can do one of those nights. Right, right, definitely. Well, um, yes, does anybody yes. remember when Yvonne's going to be back? Okay. <laughs> I will, um, I'll send her an email and talk to her as soon as I can. Yeah. We'll kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's the last week when they have the whole month to promote it with local media. So yeah. Well, I'll talk to her as soon as I can. She was on vacation the week before this week the week before, so she should be back after okay. soon. Okay. All right. Um any other thoughts on the um seminar series or i mean i was gonna say we could do sustainable turf again that got a really great yeah. crowd uh there were a lot of folks interested in that uh i don't know if we've ever done anything on rain gardens that might be something yeah that's that's not a bad idea um Maybe we should keep a running list of ideas somehow. Because we, we could do a, a nighttime in the summer, you know, like we did Audubon one night mm -hmm. in Lars Park, and that was, that would have been well attended if we hadn't been convoked with another group. But 
in one of those too. Okay, um, well, let's keep brainstorming about that and let's move ahead with the next new business item, which is planning for the Arbor Day celebration, um, which seems kind of, I guess, um, in advance, it seems well in advance of, of uh, necessary planning, but is it, I don't know, maybe Ginger, you're probably the longest, uh, oldest member of the most senior member of the commission. Was there anything besides the future trees of this, excuse me, besides the trees of distinction award that we were planning at this time of year for Arbor Day? I so, I mean, you know, I always provide the, the Boy Scouts or the Cub Scouts for the flag ceremony. I, I mean, I, I think we're good on yeah, that's, what we have right now. Okay, that's my impression too. I think just getting to work on the uh, awards is the important part. Right now. Yeah. Okay, so we'll kind of table that for now or move it to old business and we can, maybe Yvonne will be at the next um, meeting and we can discuss a date at that point, February. So. All right. Um, well, that's it on the business. I don't have any other updates and Yvonne's not with us and Pam is not either. I don't know. Is there anything else, Eric, from the city that we need to know about? You told us about the meetings and. Yeah, just, just briefly, I'll give you just a couple quick updates. Um, tomorrow night, we have a major update in front of the council about budget and the American Rescue Plan. Uh, that's the $4.6 million the city has received. Uh, you uh, are welcome to tune in and we'll, we'll send out an email when this is ready to go public, but uh, we're featuring a new tool called Balancing Act, which uh, we have received just from council and boards and commission members and such, 55 different ideas that we've ballparked at about $11 million, which is well over 4.6 million. Um, so <laughs> Balancing Act lets people in Webster Groves go through the same kind of calculation that the city has to go through and our elected officials, which which do we want to fund? What gets money this year? What doesn't? You know, those kinds of things. And doesn't let you submit to us your input until you actually balance that budget, right? And, and provide for $4.6 million of spending. So it helps gauge the public interest, right? So uh, issues like Shady Creek renewal that we heard about during the Douglas Hill conversations, uh, other kinds of sustainability measures are on there. Uh, there are folks who said we need more parking in Webster Grove. So there are there's a wide variety. We've not screened out things here. This is meant to be ideas. And then there's, of course, the open box, right? What have we missed? What, have, what are your ideas? And how much money should we put behind those ideas? Uh, doesn't bind the city, but it's really a, an engagement tool, right? Not just the, the typical suggestion box, but yeah. a way that you can really go through the same kind of calculations the elected officials have to go through and offer that input. So uh, we'll be highlighting that tomorrow, and then that should be next week out and available to the public. So we'll make sure you all get a link, but I want you to be aware of that. And that conversation with council tomorrow is also gonna lead up to a couple other things, and namely April elections is my uh, the, the bucket of this. Uh, the council has already approved putting the use tax, which is uh, the online use tax for online sales from like Wayfair or Amazon and such on the ballot uh, in April. Uh, so that is, uh, that is like a sales tax, but is different. Uh, to be very clear, if you pay sales tax, you don't pay the use tax, but there are. I ordered from Amazon the other day and I paid no taxes whatsoever on that purchase. Uh, and so that this now starting in 2023, the state is going to put their use tax on and the Webster Groves needs to decide, do we put our local use tax on that as well? Uh, and so that uh, is going to be on the April ballot. The council is going to talk tomorrow night about a possible charter review board. The charter, if you're all familiar, we're a charter city. The charter is like our constitution, right? It's what the, the council can't do and can do. It, it's really, you know, sets out the parameters of the city. Uh, and the question, uh, should the council put this on the ballot would be, do, do you, the people, want to have a charter review board uh, to make amendments to the charter? There's good things and bad things about opening up the charter, right? There's certainly areas I could see where the charter wants to, should be revised. It's also a place where, you know, you can really radically change the nature of the people always have to vote on this, but uh, we've seen it where charters have gone the opposite way, right? And really changed the nature of city government. So important conversation. 
And then I think you may have all noticed, but the April elections we have are going to have a different looking city hall uh, following the April 5th elections. Mayor Welch is not running for re-election. Uh, so we have a two candidates uh, for the mayor's office, uh, Council Member Ar Councilwoman Arnold and Kathy Hart, and then a total of six candidates for the three uh, council seats. So uh, we are going to have <clears throat> at least one new council member, and we're going to have a new mayor uh, in the office of mayor. So uh, just want to make you aware of that. Again, the elections on April 5th, uh, those are important updates. We'll continue to provide updates from the city through Yvonne, and, and you can always check in with us in administration. But wanted to give you those updates and answer any questions. I have a question. <laughs> Eric, is that use tax still going to be $2,000? So the, the use tax, that so it's changed and different from the way it was just a year ago when you saw it on the ballot, okay? The legislature has now acted, okay? So that the, the structure is different. No longer do you have to send in your receipts to show us that you've bought online. So now... Uh, so you buy it on Amazon starting in 2023, they're going to show the use tax for Missouri. And if we implement ours, they'll show the Webster Groves use tax based on your address. And, and, and it's going to be paid to us. The $2,000 uh, is, is still there, but it's bait your seller. So you're going to end up having to apply for the rebate if you're under $2,000. Does that make sense, Jerry? Yes. So. But it, it does save you this hassle of having to collect all your receipts and then at the end of the year, you know, send them to us along with a check. So great. Thanks. Um, Eric, do yes. you know that when we have the the run up to the election, mm -hmm. I've been calling that three years ago, we had a couple of nights, public nights at Hexham Junior High, and I think at the rec center mm -hmm. where all the candidates spoke to the yes. Will that be planned again? Yeah, so we will have a candidate forum right. that you're talking about. Yes, we will have that. Uh, that'll be, uh, I think, the League of Women Voters and the Clerk's Office will be putting that together. We are on Wednesday night of uh, this week. It's a public meeting, so people can watch. The city, instead of doing individual meetings with all these candidates and, and wanting to make sure everyone has equal access, mm -hmm. is hosting an education session where we from city staff and the departments will be giving sort of a city 101 you know, who we are, how we operate, overview of the budget to the candidates uh, on Wednesday night, and then again on the 31st. And that's available, will be publicly open on Zoom as well. Wow, that is a lot of good information. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Eric? Okay, um, I guess the last thing on the agenda is um, setting our uh, meeting date for our next meeting, which I think the first Monday of February is the 7th. Yep. So I um, assume we will be online unless we will hear otherwise. And if you guys need, you know, if you want to meet there, Eric has said there'll be um, availability. The members, the, the members are welcome to come. It'll be the okay. public or the guests that we need to be on Zoom. Okay. So it would be there in person or online. Or, or you can be on Zoom. You as okay. members have that option anytime. So. Okay. Same time. Same time, 5.30, February 7th. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Good to see you guys. Happy New Year.